Welcome back to the channel. You see the information on the screen, so you know what I'm about. So let's get into it. I found this really great video from, I believe, Michaela Taylor. Again, I will link it. And she's basically talking about dating as a virgin is weird. And, um, you know, evidently I'm going to watch some of the videos so we can actually look through it and see exactly what she says. But, you know, as Christians, and that's I think that's what really kind of led me to this video, I recognize that there are going to be people out there, especially the younger set, um, that might still be virgins. And I don't want you to look down upon being a virgin. I'm not trying to necessarily say that we should beat up on people, whether or not they are a virgin or they're not a virgin. Let's be real, we all make mistakes. And one of the things that I've noticed is that a lot of times when we try to say somebody else is wrong for doing X, Y, Z, there's probably about three or four things that we ourselves are doing wrong. And so I think, again, we don't want to really use that terminology and get weird about it. All right. But I thought that this would be good because some of the people might be going through this. They might be struggling with this and they might be concerned um, about this. But again, I don't want you all, especially if you're trying to do a Christian walk to be overly concerned. Now, I will talk through it, as y'all know. The so yeah, let's get into it. So first, I guess I can start this video by explaining why I think I'm still a virgin. There's no concrete answer to this. I'm still trying to figure it out. The first reason is that I am quite shy, insecure. My first instinct isn't to be comfortable in vulnerable and intimate situations. And it seems quite obvious, at least to me, that sex is such a vulnerable and intimate interaction with another human being. And so the thought just initially scares me. The thought of just getting naked and showing my body in front of somebody else. And I used to do sports in high school, middle school, all that stuff. I was never that person who felt comfortable just changing out in the open. I still get pee shy to this day. Like when I go to the bathroom with my girls and they all like to cram in together, I will not be able to pee if they're in there and there's like no stalls. I don't know. I just, there's just something about my body that seems so private and like I don't want others to really be able to see it in full detail and comment on it. I feel comfortable being naked in front of others. So I want to stop right there. So one of the first things is remember that every human being is different. And I think that this is so important for people to understand just because you as a person out there are able to feel comfortable in certain areas, other people are not. And I know we're talking right now, you know, about a woman that we're seeing, you know, out there, you know, on display since she put her information out there. But there are men that also go through maybe not this exact thing, but they might go through something similar. Right. And maybe it's not has nothing to do with virginity per se, but it's just the fact that we have to allow people to be different. Now, I am a little bit concerned, even in the way that she started because I don't want people to be afraid, you know, of certain things as well. And this is not me, like I say, encouraging anybody to go out and have sex or anything like that, because I would never do that. But what I also want to make sure that people don't do, and I've, I've kind of seen this before, and I told you guys I recently went to like a Christian conference, and I still need to actually do a review of that Christian conference. But when I went there, one of the things that I could feel on several of the women, you know, because it was, you know, a lot of the women wanted to, to uh, abstain and they were abstinent. And I could feel where they had taken, you know, their abstinence and they had made an idol out of it. And that is, you know, one of the concerns and really the major concern for people that are trying to be abstinent or they, you know, are virgins. And then, you know, they're kind of leaning into this and it becomes something that's almost overpowering them. And I've even uh, read a couple of articles and different things like that where women uh, and men, to be honest with you, will have that. They do get married, but then they don't want to have sex after they're married because they made an idol of this not having sex. And they're afraid of sex um, to a degree. And they're worried about all these different things. And that's one of the problems that I have with the church is that we have to find a way to encourage people not to have sex, but at the same time, 
let them know that the act of sex is not dirty, it's not evil, you know, it's not wrong. I mean, God created it. It's a beautiful thing as long as it's done properly. I always shied away from sex because of that, because the thought of being naked and doing things on top of a man. I really need to have some level of trust with that person in order for me to feel comfortable with doing it. And this is this is a key one. And I know I might get beat up in the comments a little bit on this one. But when you're thinking about the opposite sex, if you see sex and the opposite sex as icky, as ill, as gross, and you have a ill, you know, type of factor about you, um, it'll make it very difficult for you to get married and it'll make it very difficult for you to have sex. Um, sex is something that is a little bit, I mean, if we look at it, you know, outside in, it can be a little gross because you're dealing with body fluids. Let's just be real. Um, but I want to make sure that people don't line up with that ick factor, because if you line up with that ick then more than likely, i am be honest with you, it'll be very difficult for you to get married. Because one of the major reasons to get married is sex. Now, we can say however we feel about it. You know, we can throw up everything. Like I said, you guys can beat me up in the comments. But your attraction to someone is actually subconscious. You might think it's conscious, but it's really subconscious. When a man looks at a woman, he's evaluating her in a subconscious level to see whether or not she will bear him children. That is why men are attracted to certain features like breasts, hips, things like that. And it's the same thing when women look at men. They're looking to see, can this man protect the children that, you know, that I will have? Can he protect me when I'm in that vulnerable state of being pregnant? So a lot of the way that we are attracted to each other has a sexual component. And so when you remove the sexual energy from something, you end up with a, um, you know, kind of a neutral, uh, you know, type of person. And you can end up in a situation where you're not giving off any type of vibe that basically moves into the place of actually two people coming together. And again, this is very tricky, you know, on a, you know, primarily Christian channel and things like that. So I'm hoping that you'll have a little bit of grace as I talk this through, but I want everyone to win, okay, out here when it comes to dating and things like that. And this is one of the things that I feel like the church does not do a lot of talking about. But like I said, sex is not bad. It's a good thing. And as a woman, you should really be attracted to a naked man. That should really turn you on. And as a man, you should be very attracted to a naked woman, okay? And all of the fluids and different things like that should not gross you out, all right? And if it does, again, you need to check yourself a little bit and try to find maybe some healing um, that you can go through so you can kind of get out of that flow. I have a religious upbringing, so I grew up in a traditionally Christian household. All of my parents were never particularly strict, so it's not like they necessarily pressured me into thinking you have to wait till marriage, like sex is a sin, like no casual sex, no nothing. They, they were not like that, but I think just growing up going to church and hearing that stuff reiterated day in, day out, constantly being fed that at such an early age, I think it affected me and for some reason it just stuck with me. I think they call that Catholic guilt or something. I'm not Catholic. I don't necessarily read the Bible every day or that I pray all the time or anything like that. There are some values that have stuck with me from when I went to church and stuff, but now I'm not entirely sure what I would call myself. I guess you could say more spiritual. And even that term I'm not comfortable with. I think growing up in the church and sitting in the sanctuary and hear them lecture us about sex, See, I'm even uncomfortable saying it. Like, isn't that so pathetic? I literally go, sex. You are too old to be acting this way. Just hearing these conversations about sex and purity and waiting till marriage and abstinence and all of that stuff. I always just have this little feeling or voice in my head that's just like, you shouldn't do that. <laughs> and then my psyche switches because then I hear another voice like, that's completely ridiculous. I've talked to other people who've grown up in religious households. Most of them aren't religious and don't practice anymore. And yet they still share the same experience of being a little nervous and shy when it comes to sexuality. Okay, so what she said there, again, I think that's extremely powerful. There's a lot of things within the church, again, and it depends upon the church that you're in. 
So some churches are going to push one thing. Some churches push another thing. What I find is that most churches, just like most people, most influencers, um, they kind of have their four or five things that they push and they push it all the time. And it can be damaging if it's not balanced and if they're not really thinking through every piece of it. So I, I, you know, I grew up in and out of church. I never had that push on me personally, um, you know, about sex, to be honest with you. But I will, um, you know, just kind of give you this nugget about myself is that, you know, my mom, she didn't really care as much about talking to me about sex, but she would talk to me a lot about children. And she would say, you know, well, if you get, you know, have, you know, get a girl pregnant, you know, you're going to have to take care of that baby and your, you know, and your fun and all your life is going to be over. I mean, she would say that all, all the time. And that, that did stick with me. It stuck with me to the point that even when I was married, you know, and, um, you know, me and my ex were talking about having kids. While I did want to have kids, there was still a, a, that voice in the back of my head that said, you don't want to have no kids. You don't want to have no kids. And so I think what she's talking about right there is the exact same voice. And so I think it's really important for, you know, parents to find that balance and even for churches to find that balance. Because if you overdo it, you can damage, you know, the child in the way that the child thinks. But if you underdo it, then the child might just feel free to go out and just do and have all these, you know, problems out here, right? You know, by doing quote unquote bad things. So I think it, it, it is a balance to it. And I think that churches, especially, they have to find balance. Relationships or anything with the opposite sex at all. I didn't get a chance to like even kiss a guy f until like two, two, three years ago. Insane, but I promise you, like when it comes to dating, I just never had that opportunity. In high school, I was focused on school and I didn't really have any crushes on anyone. In college, I had my crushes, but the crushes were usually taken or already in relationships. So I just distracted myself, focused on school once again. And then once I came back home, I was focused on finding a job and rebuilding connections with the people I had here focusing on friendships and things like that. I'm not in male dominated spaces. So I work in boutique fitness, which is pretty much mainly just women, I'm not around men often. And the only time I really do find myself engaging with them is when I go out to like bars and clubs on the weekends occasionally. And that's just not really where you want to meet the best of the best. Okay. So one of the things that I want to talk about here that I don't think I've ever really brought up on this channel um, is something called milestones, right? So as you go through life, there are average milestones. And we know when we talk about average, we're talking about society. And we also know when we say society, that's not always saying biblically based. OK, um, if you were to go back years and years and years ago, you know, all the way back to biblical times, as we want to say, which would have been about 2000 years ago or so, um, when a woman would be like in, in her particular case, more than likely when she turns somewhere between 13. And I know some of y'all don't really get that, but that, you know, that that is true, depending upon what culture um, between 13 and 18, she would have literally just been introduced to a man. You know, they might have had a little bit of a conversation. You know, when I've talked to people from, you know, not just the Middle East, but people from Africa, people from India, it wasn't always that the woman was 100 percent married to the man. Sometimes she did have a choice. Um, but regardless of that, you know, she would be introduced to the man. If they decided to get married, then they would get married. And then she would just poof, be into this world of marriage and dealing with it, you know, and that could be a good thing. It could be a bad thing. Again, I'm not trying to get into the politics of, you know, that arranged marriage type of situation, but what she's dealing with right now, it wouldn't be an issue. But since we're in a Western society where people are thought to find their person when you are, quote unquote, behind in milestones, it actually hurts you. So what is a milestone? A milestone, like I said, is just an event of life that generally for most people happens at a certain time. And so it gives you the opportunity to think about it to rationalize it before you continue to the next milestone. So I'll give you an example. Um, 
there is a point with children where they will say approximately their first word. I don't know when that is, you know, um, but there is a time. A lot of women who've had kids, if their kid has not said their first word after a certain time, they start taking them to the doctor and they say, hey, I've been working with them, but you know, my child has not said their first word. Or maybe the, the child doesn't walk when this milestone is supposed to happen or they don't do X, Y, Z. So generally speaking, at six months, the baby's gonna act a certain way. At one year, the baby's gonna act a certain way, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Well, romantic milestones are about the same. A lot of people will have their first kiss by the time they're 13 or 14 years old, okay? They'll have their first boyfriend or girlfriend by the time they're 15 or 16, and usually will even have their first date you know, around 16 or 17 years old. Okay, so by the time a, a person is in their 20s, they've generally had their first kiss. They've generally gone out on a date. They've generally, you know, tried to impress their girlfriend or boyfriend, right? And when they miss these milestones, what happens is when they run into the average person, okay, the average person doesn't see them as normal they now see them as abnormal because their behavior is different. Their behavior in this part of their life seems young. To give you an example, um, I had a, a friend um, and me and her were just talking and you know she knows kind of what I do and she was telling me that she had an incident when she was 26 and she was dating a guy that was about the same age, 26, 27, but he had never had a girlfriend, okay? and she said the way that she was, you know, would talk to him and, and the way that everything was going down, it made her feel uncomfortable because she was like, he just didn't know anything. That's how she said it. You know, she was just like, he just didn't know anything. And so he didn't know to put his arm around her. He didn't know to hold her hand. He didn't know when to lean in and kiss and stuff like that. And so it put her on guard because it just felt, you know, different. And while I don't think different is bad, um, I will say that it's, it, it can be a little bit troubling. And I'll be honest, one of the things that saddens me is that when a woman is behind or her milestones, there's more men that will have patience with her. But when men are behind on their milestones, a lot of times women have no patience. Um, and I understand why. Um, that's a leadership thing. So for the men out there, you know, I would just say, you you know, there's other things you can build up about yourself if you're behind in a few milestones. Don't feel like you just have to go out there and do bad things, you know, just to hurry up and get to where you, you need to be. Um, because one of the key elements with all of this, if you are what another person wants, you know, from a personality uh, perspective and they're decently attracted to you, you can still get married. You can still find your person. So you don't need to go out here and start to do bad things, quote unquote, you know, just because you're in a certain situation right now. Your person should be able to adapt. And that's one of the things that I'm always saying, like even when I joke about, you know, her being my, you know, <laughs> my um, celebrity baby mama, the point of that, that concept is that men and her are on two totally different levels. And so if she was like, okay, you have to be more in whatever level that I want. Like if she was saying, oh, I want you to be abstinent or, oh, I want you know this relationship to only go nine months before we move into marriage. If I thought she was everything that I wanted, she would be able to get a little bit more of what she wants, if this makes sense. So I'm just trying to let you know that when two people truly come together and there's that synergy of, OK, we both want the same thing. We're both decently attracted to each other. Um, you'll be surprised how many men and women will have patience with you if they truly think, you know, that you're their person. So, yeah, that's another reason is that I just haven't had that many experiences talking, dating, being with men in general. 
and now I'm gonna get into dating as a virgin. First of all, I didn't know, or maybe I just didn't expect most people to be turned off when they hear that I'm a virgin. I know what people say, they say, you don't need to share that stuff when you're dating, or you should hold that off for a later time, or you don't even have to tell them that you're a virgin, like it's none of their business. And that's not why I'm telling them. The reason that I tell them is usually because I am asked about it. In the first three dates, the topic of sexual intimacy and compatibility is going to come up. Either they're expecting sex to happen soon, I'm still that is crazy that i do that with the word and the second thing is that i know on my end from jump that since i'm a virgin i cannot just have sex like i'm putting a number on it when the first couple of dates i can't i can't do that i wouldn't feel comfortable i think we've already discussed my issues with vulnerability and intimacy and that for me to engage in such an activity i need to establish some sort of trusting loving relationship to where i feel comfortable with sharing that part of myself with them and i know that from jump but they don't and the last thing i want to do is waste people time because not everybody wants to commit before having sex which i totally understand conversation has to be brought up otherwise we both end up wasting each other's time so to speak and just going on a couple of dates and then it just doesn't go anywhere and in my experience i can honestly say that i am shocked at the reactions that i get when i tell people i'm a virgin so usually they're just like oh are you like waiting for marriage or something? Then they get turned off and ghost me because once they hear committed relationship and it's like the second date, I understand them being like, uh, pump your brakes. Not interested in that. One dude actually told me, he was like, so what's wrong with you? Like, again, I hate that she has gone through this, but I understand it because when you're dealing with society and you have to realize, when, you know, as I was talking about milestones, most men um, are probably, I would say well over 50% of men are going to, honestly even more than that i probably say closer to 80 percent of men by the time they're beyond 20 years old they probably have had sex okay so uh, you know a lot of women think oh it's probably closer to 14 15. no that's that's not true it's like i say remember you're dealing with different types of men now if you're talking about that 20 percent of men that most women quote unquote chase and i don't even really like that word chase i just think that those men are just a little bit more aggressive with the way that they go through life well that 20 percent of men yeah they probably lost their virginity at 14. but when you start to deal with the average guy it was probably more around 17 18. okay because a lot of guys like i said they're just not out there like that and uh, i wish more women really kind of understood that but you know that's a whole nother topic so one of the things that she probably needs to do and this is something you know for the women out there she's going to need a very mature guy not a guy that's out here trying to play games but a guy who the number one thing that man wants is marriage um i would want to say an older guy but that's not necessarily true as well because there's a lot of older men that are still playing young men's games all right or young boys games if you want to even use that term um because you know just because a man is older does not mean he wants to settle down, that he just wants to be with you, you know, all these other types of things. I think that there's benefits to older men, but it has to go down to the maturity level of the man. And just because a man is 40 or 50 doesn't mean he's mature. Um, and it's the same thing when you're dealing with a man that's 20, 25, he can be extremely mature. All right. Um, so it really has to do with his maturity and what he wants. And unfortunately, we have a society where a lot of people feel that what they're doing is they're literally are dating. They are just dating around, having fun, and then they think that one day um, a person is just going to show up that's going to be so spectacular that they're just going to have to wife that person up. And to me, that's not the best way to date um, or to be out here in these streets, so to speak. Um, a much better way is to know what you want. And when you are dating for marriage, i.e. dating to court to go to marriage, that is the type of person that she needs. She needs someone that is ready to get married, ready to start a family, and that is going to have the maturity to be patient. Now, like I said, that could be an older guy, that could be a younger guy. Generally speaking, it'll probably be a little bit older guy, just simply because if he wants to get married, if he wants to have a family, more than likely he's been through some things and therefore he'll be a little bit more patient, right? 
But I want to make sure I'm, I'm clear that just because he's older does not mean that you don't have to vet him, that you don't have to think about what this man wants, because there are a lot of older guys that made a lot of mistakes. And honestly, they really kind of want to make them again. What she's described is not just the fact that she is a virgin, but she has body issues. She has um, self-worth that's probably some of that wrapped in. So she could come in and have sex with a man, but then still not feel intimate with him. It could take her two or three years before she can truly open up and be the full, you know, uh, fully embody, you know, her own personal sexual nature. You know, because she has a lot of things in the back of her of her mind that are basically telling her that sex is ugly, that sex is not a good thing. And because of that, you know, whatever man is with her has to be extremely patient. He's like, what's really wrong with you? Is your personality? And I'm like, no, I hope not. And then we have the typical cocky guy that's like, oh, you're going to get attached. You're going to get attached. That's why I can't I can't pursue this anymore because I don't need you clinging on after we do it. Since it's your first time, it'll be so emotional. Which I guess a part of that is kind of true, but also relax. Most of y'all don't know what y'all doing, no way. So I highly doubt. I highly doubt. Sometimes I get the reaction in which people are creepily into it, really into it to where they bring it up all the time and make crude jokes that make me so uncomfortable. And they're just like, oh yeah, that's hot. That's like so hot. I'm actually like really into that. I can't wait to take her. And it's like, ooh, not interested in being fetishized. It honestly feels like I'm just like in a hamster wheel running at full speed, but going nowhere or like a dog chasing its own tail because I'm uncomfortable and vulnerable in intimate situations. Therefore, I know I need to be in a trusting and secure relationship before sharing that part of myself. The guys that I'm interested in are not interested in sharing that moment with me because they know that I'll get attached, which is true based off of the first two premises. So they reject and ghost me, but then we're left at if every guy does that and says that, how am I supposed to fix the first two problems? <laughs> Yeah. So again, you know, I just want to say something to that. Um, I don't know if she'll ever watch this particular video, but she just has to find that patient guy. And there are patient guys out there. There are. Um, you know, I know some of the people that watch me, you know, depending upon the comments that I've seen, like I say, I don't watch or see all of the comments, but every blue moon, I'll see a comment here and there. And I've noticed that some guys really are like that. They truly are the patient. They're looking for a woman that they can marry that has more of a traditional mindset and they're not looking at it in that same um, way. And even some of the men that, like I say, that I've seen that have come out, you know, um, to, you know, the group and even in some of the other groups that I'm involved in, you know, I do run into a man every once in a while that would have that level of patience, but it's just, she's going to have to find that. But for, like I say, for the women that are out there, there are men out, out here. You know, remember that God always keeps a remnant. So, um, you know, you, you, there's going to be people out here. You just have to allow yourself to find them. And remember, one of the, the comments that I'm always saying is you kind of need to like the person that likes you. And, I, and when I say that, I'm not saying that, you know, if the, if the guy, you know, is missing an eye, he's like, yeah, girl, you your boy. <laughs> um, no, I'm not saying you have to pick him. I, I want you to be attracted to the guy. But, you know, you, you, you again, you, you have to balance your attraction to the man's outside to the attraction to what he is on the inside. And that's the same thing for men as well. You have to balance your attraction to the woman on the outside to the balance of what's on the inside. And it's been brutal, to say the least. It's ruined every single possible relationship I could have been in the topic of sex because we ultimately were never on the same page and it just seems like nobody wants to invest themselves in dealing with a virgin at this age and I get that. I understand. I understand that perspective very well but it's like what am I supposed to do here because I can't just go out and do it on a whim. That would probably end up being a traumatic situation for me. So yeah that's my perspective on that. I was just anybody that's going through this don't give up. Um, don't worry. Don't overly be concerned. Like I said, God has your back, but you, you're going to have to find patient people. And sometimes, like I said, like I, I like I told you, I went to this uh, one particular event. It was called the Sexless Tribe. Um, I am going to try, like I say, to do uh, a review of that. But there I'm, I ran to several people, uh, both men and women who were virgins. 
So I would probably encourage her to just go ahead and join a group like that because there are men in there that are abstinent, that are trying to wait, and men who have basically taken that cross upon their back of abstinence, they're generally going to be a little bit more patient because they're not rushing. So she's kind of given up in some way because she kind of said it earlier about, you know, she just kind of considers herself spiritual. If she can get around what, and, and I don't even know if I really want to use this word as in good, uh, but if you can get around, quote unquote, good Christian men that are trying to follow God's way without being overly judgmental. I think that that is one of the keys. You know, like I've, I've, I've kind of said before, um, I do believe in God's truth. I 100 percent believe in God's truth, but I also know God has grace and I believe God sits in the middle. Um, I think when we go too far towards the truth, which is the law, um, we are hurting ourselves. And that's when people would demonize her, um, you know, for even being worried about being a virgin and worried about, oh, well, she's going to have sex before marriage. They would demonize her for that. Um, but then you have grace people where they would just be like, well, you can just go have sex with everybody and God will forgive you. Um, and see, that that's too far as well. So to me, it's about being in the middle and having that uh, a belief that, OK, people are going to make mistakes. But at the same time, let's try to find that balance. So if she can find a man that has that type of energy that, you know, wants, um, you know, to, to be in that committed relationship. But I think she's it would be better. You know, and I kind of hate to lean her into Christ that way, <laughs> you know, because God is good. But um, if she is in that space, I do think it would be a little bit easier um, as far as being in a relationship. But you, but she doesn't need to come to God to get laid. Uh, she needs to come to God because she loves God. Uh, but anyway, definitely thought this was interesting. Hopefully you all got something for it um, from it. If you're interested in, like I say, membership, that join button is down below. And besides that, please like, please subscribe. And I'm going to see you all in the very next video.